There, I think I'm recording. Hello, Glenn, and this is a little bit on your bow. Uh, what I had was um, a longer. Now, I shortened it down to, I believe it's 54 inches, tip to tip, which is a nice length, which falls into the realm of actual, authentically um, length Northern Plains horse bows. It was just a recurve bow, a recurve D bow, and I cut the original tips off and I shaped them into a nice authentic horse bowie style tip right there. And so what this is, this was worked down from a stave, it's a stave bow, not a board bow, in black walnut. And although you can't see it, um, it does follow one growth ring very nicely. And there's going to be some banding of color in it. It'll deepen up when it's finished. Um, they usually look a little bleached out like this just because of the steaming process, what have you. But once it's finished, it'll look more heartwood walnutish. It is a fully tillered bow. It was fully tillered before I, I changed it over to you. And it was just like sitting in my pole barn. I was thinking about sinew backing it. But when you mentioned you wanted a horse bow blank, it's like, ting, the light bulb. I've got this beautiful stave made walnut D bow that I can certainly turn into a cupid shaped bow. More than a gull wing at the set back handle, um, deflex tips, and if you were to line it up you'd see that there is going to be a good deal of reflex in it. Walnut is a very good bow wood. I love walnut. It has a certain kind of a, a good plasticky feeling to it. So it's going to be a beautiful sinew back bow. Now I'm assuming that, oh, perfectly straight, nice, which is a good sign. It could have been a little bit off, you know, twisting and what have you in the steaming process, which could be fixed, but your bow is nice and straight. Now, as far as sinew backing, um, on the, the, the Great Plains and in a lot of other areas, you know, it might be an exception along the West Coast, do not stress out about having a flawless, perfectly smooth sinew back surface. You know, in fact, that being your first time, and you're going to lay it down, you're going to see it um, transform from that wet kind of um, ripe off the vine sinew to the finished. If you do get some separations, if you do get some, say, uh, some texture on that, I personally, I, I love the perfectly smooth sinew jobs, but I also like the texture that sinew has. It almost looks alive you know, muscle and bone kind of a thing. So it's going to be a very simple process for you. Because it does have a setback handle, I would suggest, you know, just right here, you know, through the setback handle, put a nice layer of sinew down there, wrap it um, so it doesn't pull up, you know, on this um, concave surface, and let that harden, and then do the rest of the bow. You want to make sure that you, you keep that setback in there. Prior to changing it around and stuff, I shot this bow a lot. It's a nice, proven, till it, well tailored bow. It was in the order, I believe, of 40 pounds at I forget what draw weight. So it's a very reasonable draw weight. It's not going to be like a monster bow that is going to sit on your wall as a decoration because it would be so easy just to um, sand the limbs evenly and get it down to whatever draw weight you want. Uh, it's going to be a simple process for you and it's going to be an amazingly beautiful bow. And I appreciate you, you know, asking me, John, I want to get one of your bow blanks. What can I do? And it's like, here we go. And I love doing custom work. You know, I'm not getting rich making bows, but I'm getting rich finding all these great friends out there. And so, get a hold of me if you have an idea of something you want to do. I can work with you. And uh, you know where to find me. Have a great day. And appreciate your viewage. <laughs>